Welcome to the A2 Show with Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson, bringing you the trends and topics that affect our lives the most. Business, politics, fitness, family, and finance. With over 50 plus years of combined business experience and over a billion dollars in revenue generated, your hosts have a unique gift for seeing many steps ahead where others do not. They bring their unfiltered, contrarian views to the show every week to help you win in business and in life. Welcome back, everybody. We've got a mixed bag show today, Aaron. We're about 30 days out from the election, so definitely want to touch on that. I feel like the world is on edge right now, not just America, but the world as a whole. And we've had a couple interesting news announcements in the direct selling space. I know that we have a lot of viewers that are direct sales professionals, network marketing professionals, insurance agents, financial advisors. What's interesting is since we come from a sales show previously, prior to the A2 show, Sales Velocity, um, what's interesting is we're seeing a lot of turmoil in the direct selling industry. One big company in particular called Beachbody, which is a, a pretty big brand, Aaron, you and I are health and fitness guys. And that brand is on TV, internet, radio, and they have a massive direct sales force. And I think they just either shut down or they shut down a whole division of their direct selling unit, which we want to address today. So today, more of a current events day, and we'll pivot into a lot of areas. No real specific topic today. It's one of the things we like to do periodically is uh, venture into one of our big five categories, business, politics, fitness, family, and finance. And we'll probably venture into at least three of those five here today. Absolutely. I'm super excited to kick off the show. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go with this pivot that's happening in the network marketing world? Or do you want to start with the current events with what's going on? 30 days left, man. It's a, it's a big thing. I mean, I'm, I'll I'm touch on it quickly. I think everybody's probably plugged in, but depending on where they're plugged into really depends on a lot. What I follow really closely, you know me probably as long as anyone, Aaron, is I'm a, I'm a detail-oriented guy, and I like to try to get information that is as independent as possible. It isn't, it isn't always possible to do that. Some information is tilted very right. Some information is tilted very left. Unfortunately, today for all Americans, at least I, I, I talk in the sense of Americans, the, the majority of the media, 80% plus is tilted left, which I think is bad for everybody. It should be like it was when I grew up, right down the middle always. Nobody should have an opinion. Nobody should have a stance. Everything should just be neutral and reporting the news. The polls consistently day in and day out from mainstream media, right? Again, typically 80% left Democrat, let's call it. They're, they say neck and neck. Trump's ahead by one in this state. Harris is ahead by one in this state. Then it's neck and neck again. Then it's two points up all within that. What do they call that? The, the, the rule of uh, the margin of error, right? Sure. Which uh, basically they call it a dead heat. Now, I'm always skeptical of anything that comes from mainstream media because they've literally been wrong about everything I can even think of for the last four or five years since the COVID-19 pandemic and exposed, been exposed them. exposed many times. And they've been exposed many times at this point. Yeah, it's not even like we're coming from left field anymore. True. Now, then I go to the independent polls. I mean, these are people who are like libertarian, non-big party, non-establishment. They don't like to be in, too, in bed too far with a, a Democrat or a Republican. They're independent pollsters. Guys like Rasmussen is the biggest. He's an independent libertarian guy. But then there's the smaller polls that are completely independent, self-funded, right? And they're pulling polls from real people on the streets. Now, they did this with Kennedy. I, I, I think we did a show on this many times where Kennedy's polls were unbelievable and they just kept burying them. And then eventually he had to step out because, you know, the totalitarianism measures just got too big. And so it's the same kind of people where they're asking people on the streets 50-50. You're Republican, you're Democrat. So, so they're taking a pool of like both parties, not 80% Democrat, 20% conservative. Oh, she's ahead or vice versa, right? They're taking real grassroots polls and they're even going to people who've never voted before. So they're really uh, a fair and balanced pollsters. Aaron, I follow five or six of them and they've got Trump, like it isn't even close. I'm talking 70, 80, 90, 100 point plus electoral college landslides and they can't find any scenario where it would even be close. And, I'm, but, and now I'm skeptical of that too, obviously, because how could it be that big? But how could it be so far apart from the mainstream news? One in two percentage points. I haven't seen one of these pollsters, and I follow about four or five of them. Again, independent, nonpartisan polls. I don't even. I haven't seen one in the last two months that even has it at a fifty-point 
win of Trump. They're at 80, 90, 320 electoral to 219, 315 to 220, 195 to 160. Like it isn't even because you know that you got to get to 270, right? Not one of them is even within a 20 to 30 point margin, which is really weird. So we're not seeing anything close off mainstream media to mainstream media, which I, which to me is concerning. Well, and it's, con- it's confusing, right? Very so confusing. You're American. I'm not American. So we often have different viewpoints on the same system, you know, Canadian or U.S. politics. And, and I think the unfortunate thing when you see things like that, when you see such a large discrepancy between what's promoted by the mainstream media and then what's counter promoted by somebody who seems, you know, less influenced in their research and their data The unfortunate side is that it makes people confused and it makes people not know who to believe, what to believe. And in many cases that possibly the system itself is just broken. And that's a a very dangerous thing to insert in the minds of, you know, people in any country. That's where we are. That's where we're in the U.S. That's where the U.N. is. There is absolutely a a fractured system. And I do believe that COVID-19 exposed it. And people now know where to look. They're looking in places they never have before. I think the mainstream media and, and the people who are behind a lot of this, you know, unfair and balanced reporting are fully exposed to your point earlier. And I think that that is a, I think it's a good and a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing because media should be based on integrity and it should be completely middle, middle ground, fair and balanced. So that's, that's, that's a bad thing because there's lack of integrity from mainstream media, which I think now last poll I checked, something like 35% of Americans trust the mainstream media. Lowest number in history, by the way. Yeah, it's actually 35, I th- It might even be lower than that. We might be below 30% now. That's pretty you know scary, really, man. You know what's really interesting is that I was talking about this with my kids the other day because when my kids hear stuff or they read stuff, mm-hmm. You know, whether they're hearing it from radio or watching it on television or kids don't really watch television much anymore. Yeah, they don't consume their news from TV really, right? Yeah, they're really more consuming their information from YouTube. They're consuming their information from social media. Which is concerning also, by the way. Right. And I challenge them, you know, don't be a sheep. Just because somebody says something, go and do your research. Make sure you know the facts. Yep. Don't be a minion that's exactly. regurgitating things that you see online because it makes you sound stupid mm-hmm. when people call you out. Yep. Go do yep. your research first and establish your own opinion and try to get it from as many sources as you can if you're mm. going to. Good advice. Ha- if you're going to have an opinion. And so we were talking about it the other day in our house and I, I said, let's look and see what the most trusted news sources are right now by the American public. And obviously you have to assume that the that the poll was taken in a way that was unbiased. And it was it was shocking. Like the 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 mainstream television stations that the majority of the people consume their information from were extremely low in this chart. You're talking like the big three like CNN, MSNBC and Fox? Oh yeah, they were they were all way low on the trust ratio. And it was mm-hmm. actually like the BBC was still relatively good. Um, that was one of the ones. Al Jazeera was actually one that was one of the highest. And what's really funny is you remember when Al Jazeera came out, everybody thought it was, it was like, a, it's like a terrorist channel, they thought, right? Yeah, like it, and, and maybe it was at the time. <laughs> it, maybe it was. But everybody assumed like this is just a terrorist propaganda news source. But when you actually read the which sources were trusted, Al Jazeera was one of the highest you know, with regards to comparing it to other major traditional news sources. I think, I think ABC was still relatively high. Well, they probably lost it in the last election when they, you know, (laughs) were fact checking one candidate and not the other. It was just really interesting to see what, what was the trust level by, by average American Mm -hmm. with the big media sources that are most heavily pushed into the airwaves. And it was, it was very low. So it's, it, I'm glad you brought this up. It's an interesting topic. I wasn't planning on going here just yet, but it really is a good topic. We did a show, I want to say about two years ago, called The Tale of Two Internets. And you could head over to, if you head over to the a2show.com, we actually have an archive section to all the previous Sales Velocity TV shows. This is a good one to go back and watch. And the reason we did it is because we saw in early 2022 that there was this divide happening where you had mainstream media, traditional internet media, traditional social media. Then all of a sudden, because of the topics we just spent five minutes talking about, a whole new internet got formed that was censorship-free, First Amendment protected, 
And it was Rumble, which was an alternative for YouTube, completely uncensored video. It was Substack, which is where I published my Renegade report, which is completely fair game, free speech, no censorship platform for publishing and blogging. And then there was Twitter, which is now X, when Musk took over. 